All right, um, this is a video to demonstrate to you how to um, develop the both graphical and statistical um, information for a bivariate set of data. Um, we've already done it for a single uh, data set, and so this time we're not so focused on the graphical um, representations um, for each individual set, but the ones that really, the one that really describes uh, the relationship between them. So we'll be doing uh, a couple of things. We'll be creating a scatter plot, and I'll explain that to you. And then we will be creating um, mean and standard deviation statistics for each set of values, and then a correlation statistic that talks about the uh, relationships between them. Uh, this video is primarily a demo of how to calculate those numbers. Uh, we will have a separate video where we would uh, model how you I will model how you um, would explain those numbers to folks. The data that we're using for this today is uh, uh, information on unemployment by state. We have 51 observations um, because we also have the District of Columbia in there. Uh, the data was gathered. Um, on September of 2015 and September of 2016. So ultimately what we're looking at is what are the relationships from year to year. Uh, the unemployment rates are stated in um, percentages. So this 4.8 is a 4.8% unemployment rate. 3.6 is a 3.6% unemployment rate. And the main thing we're trying to understand by doing this analysis is whether or not there is some relationship between what the unemployment rates were last year and what they will be this year uh, within a state or whether this is really just sort of a, a random occurrence. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is to go ahead and do a graphical review of those. It gives us a little bit of a sense of the relationship. And so we'll start that by uh, highlighting the data. Um, in my version of Excel, which is the Mac version, I can highlight it. Um, but, you know, sometimes you'll have to go through a little bit different process. And if so, then ask me and I will, I will help you through that. But in my case, I just highlight it. I would go select charts. And what we're looking for is a scatter plot. And we want a scatter plot with no lines. We just want dots. And you'll see why in just a second. So, selected that and it immediately creates this. Now, one of the problems that we have with this is that we don't know exactly which axis represents which set of data. So I go into the select data, I open up the uh, data source for, I don't know if you saw that, this is the data source for the X values. X values are always the values on the horizontal axis. And we see that the X values came from column B, which is this. It's the first column. That column is uh, the data from 2015. You see the other data came from column C. And so that's for 2016. And so you want to add labels to your chart so that you know that which um, you're talking about. Um, so we're going to go add axis labels. We're going to add a horizontal axis. Again, that's going to be at the bottom here. And we said that was for 2015, so we'll put that in there. Um, and then we're going to go back up here and we're going to add a vertical axis. Vertical axis gives me some choices. I can either have it rotated so that it reads up and down. I can have stacked letters. I can put a horizontal. I like the rotated, so I'm going to do that. That's my 2016 data. Um, and I don't really need the legend out here because I only have one data series, so I'm going to get rid of that. And then we'll add a chart title. And that is uh, unemployment by state 2015 versus 2016. And obviously you could, uh, you know, make that title a little longer, make it whatever you want. Um, just keep in mind that, you know, if you, have a, if you have a fairly descriptive title, then people don't know what's going on. Now, now that we've plotted this data, it seems to me that there's some relationship. And, and so that you understand what this plot is, um, imagine that we took the value 4.8 for 2015. So that would be right around here. 
and we took 3.6 for 2016. Um, and so that would be somewhere right around in here. Uh, and sure enough, there's it. We just plotted the intersection of those two points on the scatter plot, and uh, that that is that dot. And we did it for each pair. So we have a dot for each pair. The reason we do that is that when you have those dots um, lined up this way, um, you can tell whether or not, for example, when you have high values of unemployment rates in 2015, or those do those also tend to be the high values in 2016? Um, you could obviously have something that's a little bit different from this look, and and you know, so you you potentially could have something that says, well, I have really high values in 2017, but they tend to be really low values in 2016, or 2015. Sorry, and so. High values in 2015, really low values in 2016, and so you would wound up with dots down here, um, and obviously that would have changed this picture. So for us, what we're seeing is when the values are high in 2015, they always tend to be high in 2016. Same thing when the unemployment rates are perfectly straight line. Um, obviously, we have some variation around it but it tends to kind of have this slope to it. And in fact, with Excel now, one of the things that you can do is to um, go into your charting and add a trend line. The trend line will use a linear forecast trend. It's just a little bit longer than a linear trend. Okay, uh, What the trend line basically does is tries to give you some indication of if I were to try and fit a straight line through the data that would best basically explain the relationships, um, that's what that line would be. And you'll see this again uh, when we do regression a little bit later on. Maybe this will make a little bit more sense. But you can see that that line tends to do a fairly good job of explaining sort of these relationships. <coughs> Excuse me. So that's really the only graphical thing that we do. Um, now we're going to do some more descriptive statistics. Um, you've seen a couple of these before, the mean and the standard deviation, uh, and we're going to do those separately for 2015 and for 2016. The one you haven't seen yet will be the correlation. So we'll put that in there. All right. The formula in Excel for the mean is just average, so we'll go equals average uh, and highlight the uh, values for 2015. Boom, it gives me the uh, average unemployment rate across all the states for 2015. Now, because I've got my data lined up in two columns side by side, I can just take that formula, drag it to the right, and you'll look and you'll see now these are the averages for column C. So that's the 2016 averages. So that's nice. Um, I also want the standard deviation, so that's STDEV. Uh, you see that you have choices. You have a dot S, dot P. The dot S means it's the standard deviation for a data sample. Dot P would be for a um, population standard deviation. Uh, we've talked about this previously, but uh, in this case, we don't have a population. We have a sample. Population in this instance would have been all of the possible values that could have occurred not just the values that did occur uh, in the snapshots that we've looked at. So we're, we treat this as a sample. Um, you can't see this in Excel, but effectively by treating it as a sample, uh, when we calculate our standard deviation, we divide by one mi or the, the number of observations we have minus one uh, instead of the number of observations. So. Uh, kind of a minor technical detail at this point, but we're going to select the standard deviation sample. And again, I'll just highlight the values for um, the entire row. Hit enter. Lo and behold, we have the standard deviation for 2015. Again, if we drag it to the right, we get the one for 2016. Now, there's a lot of decimal places there, and there's not those are not particularly insightful to go out to that level of decimal. So I'm just going to hit a little formatting up here that rounds them. Uh, and so what we can see is the means are not terribly different. Uh, there's about 0.16% uh, 
percent difference between the two. Uh, the standard deviations, there's about a 0.7 difference. And so in 2016, the means just a little bit lower. I guess that's good for unemployment, it means that unemployment maybe has dropped. And the variability from state to state has dropped a little bit, so that's not terrible. Um, let's go ahead and clean up a little bit of the formatting here while I'm at it. Um, I always like to work on making something that's going to be sort of neat, if you will. Uh, so we'll go with the Format Painter here. Do that. I'm just going to go ahead and use the, as a starting point the same Format Painter down the right. Big difference here is um, once I get it to that, I'm going to format these things a little bit. To, I'm going to shift them to the right. But anyway, that's just prettying stuff up. So the means and the standard deviations, that's something that we've talked about before. The new statistic is the correlation. The correlation is, uh, in Excel, you would calculate that as equals C-O-R-R-E-L. And you see it says do an array, comma, array. So what you have to do is you highlight the first set of data that you want, or first um, set, in our case, would be the 2015 data. Put a comma. And then you go highlight the second set, which is the 2016 data, and then close the parentheses, and you calculate a correlation. In our case, again, we'll just sort of format that number. Um, so that is uh, about an 87, what we call an 87% correlation. Uh, correlation, again, we'll explain this a little bit more in a, in a video where I model how to, how to explain this data to other people. Uh, but basically, correlation, the correlations are either positive or negative or zero. Let's start with that. A correlation that's positive means that your data tends to be organized um, on your scatter plot and your trend line tends to slope up. So from the left to the right, it slopes up. Okay. Um, if it had a negative correlation, that would be consistent with data where from left to right it sloped down, sort of like that. Okay. Uh, and if it had zero correlation, then what would happen is, is that would just be data that is a big blob, effectively. Um, it would be randomly scattered throughout here, and you would have a hard time figuring out how to draw a line through it at all. And so we, we might say that it had a slope of zero, uh, so you you know you could just draw a straight line through it because it wouldn't really matter where you drew the line um, at that point. Uh, so that's what ha that's how the plus minus and zero relates. Um, the magnitude of it, um, the closer that it is to an absolute value of one, so that would be the closer it is either to positive one or negative one the more tightly these dots would start to squeeze in around the line. And so uh, in our case, you know, if we, if we said, oh, this was like a 99% correlation, what we would expect is a lot of these dots would move closer to the line on both sides, and it would almost form a straight line. And quite frankly, if it was exactly a correlation of one, it would form pretty much a straight line here. Okay. On the other hand, if the correlation starts to get less than 1 um, or closer to 0 than minus 1, so say a correlation of 0.5, um, we would see these dots start to spread out a little bit further away from the line. Okay, And so the, the, the correlation um, indicates the, the tightness with which the dots are um, distributed around um, this trend line, if you will. So we're, again, with the correlation, you have two different thoughts. One is this notion of the, the dispersion around the line, and then the other is this notion of a slope. So positive slope, negative slope. Now, understand that with a correlation, um, when you say that you have a positive slope, that does not necessarily mean that it's a slope of one. It can be very positive, you know, very sloped, and still be about, you know, a positive slope. Um, it can be very sloped the other way, a lot more steeply than this, and still be a, um, 
a, a negative slope. Uh, and really it is not the correlation itself that determines the slope. Again, we'll talk about this a little bit more with regression, but uh, intuitively it becomes the um, two standard deviations that determine the slope. If we think about what the standard deviation for 2015 is telling us, it's telling us how dispersed the data is along this horizontal axis. And so we've got it dispersed about 1% per standard deviation, and we've got a mean of about you know, just a little below five. So effectively on this axis, we're saying, oh, so somewhere, you know, most of our data is gonna lie within three to seven. So that's five plus or minus two standard deviations, basically. So somewhere between three and seven, which sure, sure enough it does. Uh, and for the 2016, we've got a mean that's a little bit less than five, but also gonna run in sort of the same range. So because our um, standard deviations are about the same, we get a line that's got a slope of about one to one. So for every unit that, that you go to the right, um, you go up a unit. Uh, you know, same way if you were to go to the left, you'd go down a unit. So it's sort of a one to one relationship and it's basically driven by the relationships of these standard deviations. Uh, you could imagine, for example, what if the 2016 data had a standard deviation that was twice as wide? Well, that would mean that the dots were spread out much wider. Um, so instead of being from, say, 4.75 to 6.75, they might be 4.75 to 8.75, right? And that would have the effect of tilting this line up. So this part would go up, this part would go down and you'd have a steeper slope, all right? So it's really the standard deviation that determines the slope. So the correlation is only talking about, is it a positive or negative slope? Um, and how, tight, how tightly the data is situated around the line. It's not talking about what the slope is, mostly. Anyway, so that's all of the both graphical and descriptive statistics um, that we have for uh, the, the bivariate data set, and uh, I want you to um, be able to calculate those. You're going to be calculating on a different data set, but that's the goal. Thank you, guys.